Decide whose money we're going to take. Uh, they loved it. Everybody wanted it. Steve, yeah. it's a big hit. No question about it. No question. Are these your new layouts? Uh, some of them. Oh, incredible. Just incredible. How do you come up with these concepts? Uh, <clears throat> beats me. Uh, they just float. That's how I know they're good. <laughs> I don't think I could stop them if I tried. They come to me while I'm eating, sleeping, brushing my teeth. Yeah. You're Steve for the last couple of months. Quick, give me a pencil. Give me a piece of paper. <laughs> if, we, if we were in a restaurant, he'd put it on a napkin. If we were in a bathroom, he'd put it on a paper towel. <laughs> Not on the rolls, I hope. No. Oh. Pencil kept breaking through the tissue. <laughs> you know the layout for the pinball thing? Yeah. He brought, uh -huh, he brought that in one morning, drawn in lipstick oh. on a nightgown. Oh. Now that is dedication. <laughs> no, that's love. That's imagination, <laughs> scope, <laughs> intricacy. Oh, mm. Those are some rough sketches. I haven't had a chance to polish them yet. No, Steve, that's not your word. I know whose they are. It's Carl's. I'd know his work anywhere. He has a distinctive style. Be confident. Steve, you're still carrying him on the payroll. He's an old friend. I'm giving him a little time to pick himself up. Yeah, except sometimes, man, I think he just... Well, listen, I don't want anybody messing up this job. Hey, I'm nobody not... who's gonna get in the way of this project. I busted my hump for this piece. I mean, you think I'm gonna let Carl or anybody else get in the way? You're crazy. All right, all right Steve. Okay, I'm just being a little overprotective. Okay. Well, uh, come on, Fred. I mean, where's yeah, the... Come on, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Up. Let's get with my wife. Yeah, I love it. Finish up. Don't worry about Carl. We're going hmm. biking later. I'm gonna have a talk with him, okay? Just remember, Mega Park is my dream. I'm not going to let anything or anybody compromise it. All right, well, here we are, gentlemen. them rocks and cactuses in line? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, hey, you want to take her out? No, thanks. You're going to kill yourself on that sucker. Hey, haven't you heard? I'm a very special person. Chances are that I may never die. I mean, I have seen the American dream, you know? And, uh, it's mine. I have arrived. You got the tools, talent, perception to turn it all inside yourself. Oh, boy. Sketches didn't go over, huh? Well, they went over all right. Like the proverbial balloon. Hey, I'm sorry, buddy. I know you're taking a chance on me, and I appreciate it. You know? I just ran a little short on inspiration. It won't happen again. No. It won't. Oh, come on now, man. We've been through a lot of times together, good and bad for both of us. I'm trying to get my act together. It's just taking me longer than I like. Damn it, Carl, you're an artist. Maybe if I had someone like Diana, I think it would be a lot easier. <laughs> no, you devil, I didn't mean Tom. that. Tom, Tom, how long did he say he was going to be? Uh, a couple hours. Remember I told you he had to talk to Carl about something? You're going to kill him. He never listens. Diana, I'm... No matter what I say to him, you know, Steve, your toast is burned. Mm -hmm. Steve, I have terminal cancer. It's always the same. He hears me, he acknowledges me, but he never listens. Yeah, don't get upset. He's so wired, he doesn't know what decade it is. <laughs> hey! Hey! About time you got here, Steve. Uh, no, I think I see you. <laughs> no excuses. My fault. I worked hard on this, Steve. Hey, I know you did. It shows. The house is beautiful. All my friends are here. 
You look incredible. I must have you. Yeah. You best go wash up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> With cold water. Mm -hmm. Plenty of mm -hmm. cold water. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you. Smooth you again, huh? When are you gonna stop being a showpiece? Don't you know you are? Maybe I do, and maybe I like it. Maybe you ought to start thinking what you're gonna do when this ride's over. You offering me an alternative? Well, about all I got to offer you is my attention, but maybe then that's all you need. Carl, next time you hit on me, polish up on a couple of things like your lines. And uh, what else? Okay, oh, what else? Your timing. I've got your kids for you. It's almost bedtime in Minnesota. Ooh, great. Thanks, babe. Hey, John, David, how's my boy? Good. Hey, did you hear the news? Disneyland, come on. You can make Disneyland look like the corner playground. You know who are going to be the first kids through, too, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I promise. All right. Hey, I know you guys got to hit the sack soon, so let me talk to your mom, huh? No, it's all right. Uh... Tell her I said thanks for sending me your pictures. Yeah, you guys are really growing up. All right. Bye. Oh, hey. I love you guys very, very much. Well, I don't understand. $14 million for an amusement park? Why, it's not a roller coaster merry go round park. It's. It's more like a. It's a fantasy warp. It's a time and space experience you can't get anywhere else. We're going to expand people's imaginations. I mean, give a whole new dimension to the word fun. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a python? No, 44 mag, a cusp of dips. Oh, that's nice. Look. You dig it? Yeah, very yeah. nice. Yeah. I was thinking about getting something to put in my car. Oh, no, baby, that's too big. Are you getting a percentage or a flat rate? No, I'm just grabbing some history. Making my mark, so to speak. I mean, can you imagine the rush I get knowing that some family in Iowa is going to save all their money and then drive all the way across the country just so they can experience one of my dreams? I mean, you don't know how high I get off of that. Hmm. That looks good. Yeah, 22 of all over. Steve, are those your kids? Yep. All three of them. Yeah, it's got easy access. <laughs> Steve, you all right? You all right? God, he's bleeding. <laughs> Steve, what is it? Look, look have a look. Oh, I can't. I can't. If I do, I'll die. Well, operator, I need an ambulance now. I am. Fine, son. Really, I am. Doctors are gonna run me out of here in another week. I don't want you guys worrying, you hear? But Mom says you got shot. Ah, uh, just a flesh wound, partner. Doesn't it hurt? Well, it would if I let it. Remember what I told you. The only way to deal with pain is to ignore it. Dad, are you gonna get a dog now? Dog? What do I want with a dog? You know, one that can lead you around. <sighs> Won't need it. I'm going to have an operation in a couple of months to get my sight back. I won't need a dog, I won't need a cane, I won't even need glasses. We want to come see you, Dad. Mom says we can. Um, 
I don't think that's a good idea, son. Uh, you're in school, and I have to get started on the park. Uh... You just hang in there. As soon as this operation's over, I'll fly up and see you. Fishing's always better up there anyway. Promise? Hey, do I lie to my boys? No. All right, now, let's hear some talk about who you love and who you miss and who's your favorite person in the entire world. You, Daddy. All right. I'll see you soon, huh? Okay, bye. Bye, boys. I'll bring the van back after I get set, all right? You're not even gonna wait till he gets home. Steve, he needs any help? Help? When's the last time Steve asked for help? Oh, God. I'm not talking about services. I'm not talking about ironing his shirt or fixing breakfast. I'm talking about help me, Diana, because I can't do it alone. Things are different now. You're damn right they're different. You think he was independent before? Well, I suggest you buy a ticket and watch the show now. Now he has to prove it. Stay around anyway, just in case. I'm going to watch him trip over steps, bump into chairs, knock things down. I'm going to be carrying this gift for a long while. And I don't want it shoved into my face every time I turn around. There is a limit to what I can handle, Diane. Everyone has limits. <sighs> Some people are afraid to admit it. I'm not. I'm not afraid to admit I need someone. I'm not afraid of someone getting too close. Your lines are getting better, Carl. <laughs> Your timing's still off. There's no way. All right, then you stay if you have to. Stay with your eyes open. No one else here. Everything's the same. Nothing's been moved. bring the van back as soon as he got settled. Tell we can keep the van. Hey, you hungry? I'll fix us some lunch. Diana. When I was in the hospital, I missed a lot of things. Your cooking was not among them. <sighs> but I did miss one thing. Listen, Romeo, as far as my talents go, it's not pick and choose. You either get them all or you don't get any. <laughs> In that case, fire up the oven and then we'll, um... Mm. Ramsey brought it for you to use. Well, what does Dave Ramsey want to hear? Cole Porter, a medley of show tunes? Budgets, schedules. Stuff for Fred Bender types. He said they're important statistics. Concept is what is important. Theme, design, that's my job. Concepts. In my office with my staff. I was some eight track shuttle service. Hey. He just thought it helped lead the stray. Oh, well. Afraid the backers would go comatose when they saw a blind man directing design. Well, I'm not blind. I'm temporarily without sight. Went upstairs for a while. Steve, what 
Steve. Here, use this. Diana, I am trying to remind everybody that I am not blind. You want me to wear the damn uniform? How much longer before the operation? It's not a question of when we operate. It's a question of if. Now it's if. He lost one eye, not two. You told him you could definitely operate on the other eye. I wasn't about to give a totally negative diagnosis. Even if I thought the man were strong enough to take it. It would have been premature to do that. Steve's condition might be operable. But I made no promises. So will he ever see again? It depends on the results of ultrasonography. Oh, Dr. Callan, it's been nearly four months, and every top specialist in the country has reviewed Steve's case. Now, I don't want models. I want a simple answer to a direct question. Will he see again? In one word, yes or no? In one word. Possibly. The electrical bids are excessive. I recommend we reject. Now, as to the modified dimensions of the Renaissance project, the proportion should be... The proportion should be... working in the dark. I hadn't noticed. Oh, sorry. Come on, don't make a tragedy out of it. Understand that. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> As an artist, being without my eyes for a couple of months is less than fun. My other talents were out of commission. Now then I'd be in trouble. I've got a lot of thank you letters still to write. Still doing those, huh? Yeah. I'm still doing the, the people who sent you flowers. You've got yourself some friends in this town. You save your best note for last. Your most lofty sentiments in your finest hand. And whom do I send that to? Yourself. sign that. Sincerely, affectionately, fondly. Love. Anonymous. Hey, I just meant go for some mystery. Uh, one of us is getting serious again. And one of us is hiding behind the clown again. What do you get like this, anyway? You act just like Carl, wallowing around in your feelings. Not quite. There is a difference between wallowing in your feelings and admitting your feelings.
When do I have my operation? You'll have to ask your surgeon about that. As his associate, I'm not involved in that decision. And what am I here for? Dr. Camlin wanted to be assured that the traumatized tissue had not become infected. And it hasn't. I was supposed to find out about my surgery today. When do I see Dr. Camlin? Check with the nurse for appointment. Sally, would you make a new appointment for Mr. Ehlers? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, next, uh, I was supposed to find out about my surgery today. Well, Dr. Camlin knew you'd be anxious for that information, but he had an emergency call. Now you listen here. I know he got that report, and I want to know what it says, and I want to know now. He was hoping to discuss it with you personally, but um, he left this in the event you insisted. Excuse me. Dr. Cameron's office? Yes, Mrs. Levine. What seems to be the problem? Cabby? Yeah. Do me a favor, will ya? I've got a note here. Just stop and read it for me. Listen, it's kind of hard to make out. It's lousy handwriting. Try it anyway. Dear Steve, the, uh, the ultrasonography. Ultra sonography. Yeah, sonography. Shows total retinal detachment. No responsible surgeon would attempt surgery. I wish it were possible to give you better news. Doesn't make sense. You know what it means? Yeah means that I'm blind. And I'm gonna get blinder! Hey, mister, take it easy, will you? Stop it! Give him a drink. Hey, who asked you? Butt out, huh? Hey, I'm just trying to help you get... Hey, I don't drink. need your help. Two guys, and you got four guys holding you down. Not bad. <laughs> oh, is that the encore? Mauling a woman? Hey, come on, Tiger. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. Oh, he is a tiger. Get him a drink. You kidding? Get him a drink. Who are you? Florence Nightingale?
Here, drink this. Come on. Let's go. It's okay, Johnny? Yeah, go ahead. Where do you live? I don't want to go home. Well, where do you want to go? The hooker. Uh, sorry, friend. I just play the piano in there. You got a piano at your house? Yes. But we're not going there. Why not? If I come on to you, you can just hide behind the piano. Stop playing. Well, you stop talking. I told you my whole life story. And anything else. How about yours? I was born in Boston. An only child. Private girls' school through college. Promising musical career. Cocktail lounge piano player, hoping to get into the conservatory. That's all. I was going uh, to wash up quietly. <laughs> what I break? Nothing irreplaceable. I'll I'll get you another one. Oh, don't bother. No, I want it. I can do it. I can do it. Now, one time in the hospital, I dropped my transistor radio. Huh? So I pushed the call button. Nobody came. So I decided to get it myself. Well, the first thing I knocked over a vase. Then. I cut myself trying to clean up the mess. <laughs> and I pushed over a plant trying to find something for the cut. And fell over a chair trying to get back to the bed. About that time, a nurse comes in and uh, she looks at the shambles and starts to yell. What are you doing? You know, why are you out of bed? Why didn't you push the call button? So I, I told her. I said, I pushed the call button. She said, you didn't push it hard enough to make the light go on. And you got to see the light go on to know that the button's been pushed. I said, you know, I noticed the light didn't go on. But, uh, I just figured the bulb was out. <laughs> Seriously, uh... What'd I break? Uh, my most unfavorite lamb. Thank you. Uh, anytime. Steve, there's a man I'd like you to see. I don't know. Maybe he could help you. You know what this means to me, Nancy? What? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I can't read Braille. Never thought I'd have to learn. His name is Brad Smith. Dr. Brad Smith. He's a psychologist, Steve. That's why the Braille calling card. What is he, um, a specialist? Deals only in blind psychos? He considers anyone who's suffered emotional trauma. Ah. His card is in Braille because he's blind. What are you? 
Is Field recruiter? A friend. Ah, uh, just give him a call. One call. Talk to him. Why? Can he operate? Huh? Can he give me back my eyes? Because that's the only kind of help I need. Well, I don't agree. Yeah. Then you're the one that needs to have her head examined. Night, I wanted to know. At 2 a.m. I was frantic to know. Right now, I just don't give a damn. I found out something, and I... I want to talk to you about it. Come the clock's not ticking. I packed it. You want to tell me something? Last night, I found out something, too. I can't live with you. I've been leaning on you too hard. You never leaned on me, Steve. Not for anything that ever mattered. You never reached out to me. And you never had a reason. And I could live with that for the accident. Now, now you have a reason and you're not reaching out to me. And I can't live with that. So you're moving out. I can't stay with a man who every day reminds me of how much I'm not needed. Oh, come on, Diana. We've always been good for each other. Make each other laugh. We have fun. Not enough. I feel... I need to rely on someone. And more importantly, know that that same someone relies on me. I think it's something they call a relationship. So you wait around all night just so you could tell me you were leaving? <laughs> Guess you couldn't very well leave a note, could you? I just refuse to see the real reason. Maybe these couple of months, these circumstances will force you to go deep down inside yourself, take a look around. Maybe things will be different then after the operation. Maybe. You said there was something you wanted to talk about. It's not important now. You got a place to stay? Yeah. As if my things were already there, I'll, uh... I'll pick up the other things when you're at work. All right. If you want me to help... I can stay. I'll manage. I'm sorry. I'll be with you in just a minute. Feel like you're on the block? A little. That's a normal reaction. You know, you're in the shrink's office. Every word does count. I didn't come to you because you were a shrink. I came to you because you were blind. I wanted to talk to another man who was blind. No, oh, is that all? Well, I'll be happy to give you the number at the Braille Institute. There's a lot of blind folks there that you can talk to, and they won't charge $40 an hour. Hey, I just wanted to know how you handle it. How I handle it won't help you, Steve. It's true, we do share the same handicap, but not the same personality and certainly not the same problems, and that's what I deal in. 
Emotional, not physical problems. You don't have any other blind clients? A few, and most of them came to me because of sudden blindness. But they found out that their real problems had been inside them all along. The blindness just brought it out. So, what do two blind guys alone in an office talk about? Where to get a deal on a cane? What to feed a guide dog? Maybe we can discuss the color red. You know, take turns trying to describe it. We have something else in common. What's that? Nancy. Is she a good friend of yours? Friend? Well, she's one of my very good friends. One of the few I can count on when I really need one. Maybe she has a thing for uh, blind guys. Sort of a maternal instinct that attracts her to us. Well, I'd rather think it was my boyish charm. What are you doing? Just opening the blinds. What for? The exercise? Nope, the plants. And me. I can't see the sun, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy its warmth. <laughs> Why is that funny? You're setting me up for some freshman analogy, right? Like? Like the sun's warmth, people's warmth, uh, feeling it when they're with you, missing it when they're gone. Someone's gone from you. Nancy? Diana. I, uh, former roommate. And you blame it on the accident. It's a hell of a coincidence, wouldn't you say? Did she specifically say that was her reason? She didn't have to. She's a beautiful woman. What beautiful woman wants to be seen on the arm of a blind man? My wife. Congratulations. So, that's, uh, what you two were for each other. Adorning each other's arms. We lived together. She was always there for me. Laughed, to make love. I told her about my ideas, my plans. She gave me encouragement. Shared my successes. And how do you feel now? How do you think I feel? I'd rather have you tell me. I miss her. But not as much as I miss my sight. You feel bitter. You're damn right. Angry. You're damn right I do. And I've got a right to. I didn't do anything to deserve this. I'm an artist. An artist without eyes. And I need my eyes to survive. Can't the great psychologist see the forest for the trees? I'm blind, man! So am I. Maybe, uh, we ought to put up a net keep score, huh? Meaning what? Meaning that all we're doing is throwing words back and forth. Ah, session's over, huh? Look, Steve, until you're willing to get in touch with your feelings and not fear them, and let those people who care about you help. There isn't much any of us can really do for you. Right now, you want to play Superman. I mean, you want to see this thing through on your own. Well, that's your business. In my professional opinion, you're not going to make it. Steve, when you're really ready to take a good look at yourself, please give me a call. I'm sure we can work it out. Janet, no charge, Mr. Ehlers. This one's on me, Steve. Good luck. you alone for a couple of weeks or what do I come back to a case of urban blight what's going on here what? something different gee all looks the same to me uh-huh how was Atlanta wonderful the whole last week we sat around and stared at each other where were the new projections in development yeah where were you you didn't show up at the office you don't answer your phone What's going on? If you don't get these juices flowing again, that dream of yours is going right down the drain. 
find somebody else. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm losing. Losing what? If you say apple, I can think apple. But I can't see it. My visualization is gone. I don't believe it. Look, when I was going to get an eye back, that was one thing. This is permanent. You ever hear of a blind artist? Heard of one without an ear. Funny, man. Real funny. I'm serious. It's over. Bull. Man, that's all it is. It's just, it's bull. It's all bull. Look at this place. But, uh, okay. Okay. Maybe they'll uh, let me take over. Would you help me if they did? Sure. Great. This could be my shot. I got a couple of uh, concepts that I've been working on. I think are just this side of brilliant. Yeah. What are you doing? Calling Dave. I'm gonna lay it on him like an hors d'oeuvre and then cook up a few more uh, projections and make a bid for your spot. Hi, it's Tom Scott. Can I talk to Dave Ramsey? Uh, Steve, can I keep your secretary? Hey. Hey, hey, easy. Take Give me the easy. phone. Take Give me the phone. Dave, Steve, I gotta talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, I got an idea that'll blow your mind. Dave? Yeah, no. It was never there. Oh, you This <laughs> free! So, what's your idea? <laughs> A ride. A dark ride like I live every day. Complete disorientation. I mean, they won't know whether they're up or down. I mean... This is a place to use your idea about zero gravity. Oh, right. I can work right. that out in less than a week. Now, keep going. Okay. Cook, cook, cook. We got Jeopardy, sensation, darkness. I mean, it will blow their minds. <laughs> we'll block the visual and expand the sensory. Huh? I mean, we're going to grab them by their nerve endings and stick them into overdrive. <laughs> well, personally, I, I find that quite fascinating. And we could keep it inside the present projected budget. No sweat. Oh, that's great. That's great. It's all great. Uh, except that uh, I talked it over with the people, you know, and they all agree with me. Just wouldn't go over. Why wouldn't it go over, Fred? Yeah, why not? Well, who wants to spend that much time in the dark, huh? I'm sorry, fellas. Nothing personal, Steve. From you, Fred, how could it possibly be personal? Listen, there's my wife. I gotta get back. Keep those ideas coming. That's what we need, original input. The only input he needs is a hot lead poker right Oh, up be his... cool, man. What do you mean, be cool? When do I have to deal with middle-level gopher types like Fred Bender? Since you took that two-week self-pity sabbatical, they still hacked off about paying a full crew to sit in Atlanta and talk about the weather. You lost a couple of points on that one. Don't worry about that. I'll get to him. Not until after we regroup for some serious inspiration. How do you want your inspiration? Straight up or cold? Cold and continuous. You got it. Join us? Uh, no, I I just wanted to say hi. And, and when I left, I, I didn't know that it was permanent. My blindness or your leaving? Hello, gorgeous. Here's your drink. a mystical experience, alone.
I'll get out myself. Keep it. for you today. When you weren't home, he left it with me. Thank you. Are you all right? Absolutely perfect. Good night. Okay. Good night. John and Dave, first of all, I want you to know that your dad misses you and I love you. We're going to be together soon when all this is over and I can see you again. You know, I, I have your pictures on my desk and I realize that although I remember your faces very well, you must have changed so much by now that, well, when I see you again, I'll be looking not only as a father ought to look at his sons, but as an artist, I'll look at the world around it. I've learned these past few months that I haven't really been looking at the world. I've been glancing at it, you know? I mean, the ocean isn't just water. It's, it's the sparkle of the sunlight on it. It's the curl of foam, the way the sand looks when a wave recedes and drains it. Bubbles form, and you know there's life buried there. Well... 
we're gonna see things together. So I want you to start really seeing. So you can tell me what your new puppy looks like and the, the way the mud looks when it oozes up between your toes and how the lightning bugs zoom past outside your window. And I'm gonna think of all the things I'm gonna really see in the time ahead. Like when you play your first little league games and when I teach you how to ride a motorcycle, the girl should take you to your first dance. <laughs> uh, but I'm already seeing. I'm sorry about that. I uh, lost track of time. Listen, I uh, think maybe we could uh, get together and talk or something. Oh, you are, huh? Today? Well, uh, I know it's a lot to ask, but I uh, think maybe I could go along. No, I'm fine. It's just, uh, Things have been kind of closing in on me around here, and sure would be nice to get away. Yeah, great. Thanks. I'll be ready at 10. Bye. Are you feeling closed in? Ah, uh, yeah. More than ever. It's my work, I know it. Been on rough times before, yeah. kid problems, money problems, divorce problems. Before, I always had a safety valve, work. I could dive right in and keep busy, and pretty soon things would straighten themselves up. Lately, I've been losing it. It's like there. It's a big win, and I'm up against it. It keeps getting stronger and stronger, and there's no rock I can duck behind until it all dies down. Let's not fight the wind today. No? No. Let's just flow with it. No.
did distinguish yourself out there today. Mm-hmm. Well, you must be exhausted. Me? Mm. <laughs> Wrong again, huh? No, you distinguished yourself, too. Did I? Mm-hmm. You are the first woman that I've gone out with since I was 19. I haven't been to bed with. Oh, I must be one in a million. You are. Yeah, I've heard about the pleasure that you take in conquest. I don't want to be just another invaded territory. How about if I'm the invaded territory? My uh, living room is big enough for your piano. My bed's certainly big enough for the both of us. You mean move in with you? Mm-hmm. With no promises for the future and no strings. Ah, uh, yes. The terms. Those are the only terms. Well, Steve, do I, do I have time to think about it? Not right now, you don't. You're staring at me. I'm sorry. <sighs> it's all right. Nance, what you can't see in my eyes you have to let me show you. Just like what I can't see. You have to show me. do it. Well, you're very cooperative. Taking Braille all morning on Tuesday. <laughs> Took you long enough to decide. Well, I like to consider my choices. And this qualifies as one of the most well-considered choices ever made. Well, considered anyway. Hey! You drop by your local watch repair and have your timing checked, huh? You're, uh, you're Nancy? Uh, hi. Hi. Do I remind you of your ninth grade girlfriend or something? <laughs> it's, just, it's nice to meet you. Great. Now that you've met my new roommate, uh, why don't you get out of here so we can initiate our life together? Hey, congratulations. But first, just give me 60 seconds. I want to show you something, and then I'm gone. How'd you like to take a ride tonight? What for? Well, I invented a little something to get you back on wheels. Here, it's a helmet. Put it on. It's a communications device. You do the driving, and I'll call the turns. Hurt Spock, Hurt Spock, can you give me work, Blythe? Hey, fantastic. <laughs> Let's get the buy -in. No, no, tomorrow. No, no, now. Okay, now.
Okay, now why don't you start a right-hand turn? Okay, you'll be headed downhill now. So go ahead and start it. He'd have a friend like you. He's lucky he's finally found a lady like you. Okay, Steve, why don't you try a little speed? Okay, not too much. Just easy. Okay, now why don't you start coming back towards me? Start a right turn. Okay, straighten it up. <laughs> mm. What a perfect end to a perfect day. Mm -hmm. Only one thing would make it better. Mm. I could see you. Tom says you're beautiful. I'm not beautiful. You make me feel beautiful. That's what counts. Morning, Kyoko. Good morning, Steve. Dave. In Atlanta. Settle down, Scott. It's only a matter of practicality. Falcone needed a bigger office, and I've moved Steve into a smaller one. You heartless, gutless, penny-sniffing scum. This is not a rehabilitation center, Mr. Scott. It's a business. Oh, yeah. And it's a profitable business because of Steve Ehlers. And it's only because of his genius at money-snipping maggot parasites like you can go out and drum up the cash for an enterprise that you couldn't create with a gun at your head. The question is only one of space. Steve can get by on a smaller one. It's no reflection on his abilities nor his contributions. Sell that one to your mama, weasel. You're phasing him out in a time-honored, spineless corporate two-step. One shred of dignity after another stripped away until he finally gets the idea and voluntarily resigns, right? Why don't you direct that passion toward your work? Why don't you take my T-square and stick it? You're through bleeding our talent, man. Get some hack artist from some comic book draw-up to finish your gold mine. I'm walking. If Steve is smart, he'll walk too. I'm gonna finish it. Steve, I'll finish it at home. Forget it, Steve. I said I'm gonna finish it. All right, man. Hey, Tom. Thank you, Steve. I'm glad you understand. It's a stupid thing to do. You're welcome. Go back and undo it. Not in your life. It's enough going down the tubes by myself. I don't need any fellow passengers. What are you gonna do? Why don't you cost yourself your job? To help you complete the project, then I'll see. I got some sacked away. I can cruise for a while. What are you gonna do? Finish the job. No, I mean after that. There is no after you finish the job. What are you talking about? Just babble. Drop me at the drugstore. I have to pick up a few then. What do you need? I'll get it. No, I'll get it. I'll walk home. I need the solo time, Tom. The door is straight ahead.
I can get it myself, Mother. has been accepted to audition for the conservatory. <laughs> He's left for 10 weeks, but oh, considering the preparation I have to do, it feels like tomorrow. Oh, fantastic, baby. You're on your way. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're going to be playing the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> Only five out of the 25 are accepted from the auditions. Oh, I just have to get it. You will. <laughs> I know you will. What's in the bag? Oh, it's just some stuff from the drugstore. <laughs> Tom dropped me off. Well, let's celebrate, huh? I mean, call Tom and uh, Karen and Richard and tell them to come on over and let's have some champagne. No. Let's go to the airport. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it will. Mm. I'll go get the car. Wait a minute, Nancy. Nancy! Global Airlines, flight number three from Chicago. Who are these people we're meeting, anyway? Uh, friends. <laughs> I know you're here. Describe Nancy for me. Uh, well, she has brown hair and, well, I think eyes. Yep. No, blue. Blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Come on. Brown hair, blue eyes. I need more information. And Nancy looks kind of like Aunt Marga. Only gorgeous. No, Nancy isn't gorgeous, are you, Nancy? She's just neat. <laughs> Come on, let's Thanks, go. Thanks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys very much. See you in the morning, okay? I love you very, very much. Well, I love him very, very, very much. Well, I love my dad a hundred and trillion, a billion, billion, very much. Hey, you guys, it's enough, huh? Keeping the animals awake. <laughs> And I love you very much. Mm, it's nice to be loved so much. 
What do you think our future is? I think fortune tellers tell futures. No. I mean, us together. I don't know. I guess it'll end sometime, sooner or later. Why? Things do, baby. That's not an answer. <laughs> Some relationships last a lifetime. And when they do, it's, it's because two people really want them to. If you're talking about marriage, I tried that. You were married. I doubt if you tried. What do you mean by that? Did you love me? Sure. Sure? Do you need me? Nancy, you do a lot for me. You're a big help. I don't think you understand what I'm asking you. Do you want me in your life? Me as, as opposed to anybody else? Me because I'm Nancy and somebody special to you? If you're trying to pin me down, I'm going to have to call a foul. I told you what the conditions were in the beginning. No strength. I agreed with those conditions in the beginning. But then I was falling in love with you. I wasn't in love yet. And now I am. Because I've outgrown the conditions. Steve, the job's over. The, the dream has ended. The perfect existence and the perfect success and the perfect woman are gone. And I can't give you any of that back. But I can't give you something else. Something special, maybe. But I do need something in return. Like... Like I love you, Nancy. I need you, Nancy. Let's turn in, huh? Not just your eyes, is it? Nancy, come on. Oh, please, you go ahead. Please. I just want to be alone. You sure? Yes. Okay. Be alone. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. Hey, up, Steve. We come all the way to Atlanta to look at this place, and you're acting like it's a funeral. I can't understand why you're not excited. 
You took it from thoughts to paper to reality. I mean, here it is. And you're not excited. I don't know. It's like an affair. It's thrilling while you're doing it, and then it's over. It's fun. You're still smiling, but it's over. Maybe we should light a couple of cigarettes, huh? You want to stay for the opening ceremonies? No. Nancy's addition's tomorrow. How about you two split up? I'd like to be there. Excuse me. I was really looking forward to Fred Bender's speech. <laughs> go congratulate a friend. <laughs> well, did you like it? How'd it sound? Was that you? I thought you said we had tickets to Van Cliburn. Well, um, and you've never known the difference. You were superb. You were better than superb. You were glorious. Well, thanks, Steve. Oh, I'm just glad you came. It means a lot to me. Well, you look good. A little tired, but good. We just got back from Atlanta. Mega Park. Yeah, we thought we'd better check it out before the masses got cotton candy and nice people. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd it turn out? Is it everything that you expected? Yeah, it was all right. Well, uh, I think a little lunch is in order, right? I don't think so. I'm not very hungry. Well, I don't mean to sit down and eat lunch. I mean, uh, order a couple of drinks, dance on the tables, flirt with the waitresses type lunch. It's something to celebrate here, right? Maybe tomorrow. Do you mind if I talk with Nance for a minute while you get the car? No. All this excitement's just wearing me out. I'm proud of you, Nance. Well, let's not jump up in the air and spike the ball yet. <laughs> I've got a good four years yet. Practicing in the day, working at night. I'll need somebody to... Make me know that it's all worth it. It's worth it. You're young and you're talented and you've got everything ahead of you. Wonderful place to be. You deserve it. Thank you. And, uh, you are a special person, Nancy. And I just wanted to tell you that I, um, uh, I appreciate it. Tired. I'd like to be alone a while. You all right? Yeah. I'm fine. Thanks for the ride. Sure. Thanks for everything. For everything? You gonna give me a gold watch or something? What is with you? 
Just thanks. I wanted to ask you something today. I'd like you to visit Mega Park and take my boys. It's the best work I've ever done and last work I'll do. I know I'm in no position to ask a favor of you, but you're the only one that can do this for me. Explain to them that for a long time now I've been feeling far away from life, like a kid at a birthday party who's not allowed to join the others. All my life, I prepared to be a successful artist. Now I can't be. Maybe if I was somebody else, I could work it out, but I'm only myself, and I can't seem to find any alternatives. Tell him I'm leaving life without understanding it very well. And the only advice I can give him is stand alone, be sufficient unto yourselves. That's what I grew by. I guess I wonder how I could do this if I really love him. Just have to tell him to take my word for it that I love them all the very much as there are in the world, forever. Nancy, of all the ladies who've ever asked me to say I love you, you're the only one I could have ever truly said it to. And I didn't. It was pride, I don't know. I do know that it's too late. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to bed. I thought you were going home. Yeah. I'm back. Well, we should have a couple of beers, hmm? Tom, I'm really tired. Well, I'll have the beers and you can have some coffee. I don't want any beer. I don't want any coffee. I don't want lunch. I'd just like to be alone, please. Been doing a little taping, huh? These questions gonna stop, or should I get an attorney? Uh. Got any sandwiches? No, I don't have any sandwiches. I'll order out. Look, I'm really tired. I'm not. You know, you'd feel a lot better if you had a cold beer and a couple of sandwiches. 
Okay. Okay. We'll pick something up on the way out to the flats. I want to do some biking. Okay, you're doing good, Steve. Just take it straight out. Okay, Tom. I want to make a right turn. Line me up. Then go ahead and start it, then. You can start it now. Good, turn to the right. Go straight it out now. Now, you better slow it down a little bit, Steve. You're heading towards the gorge. Slow it down. Steve, you're heading towards the gorge. Slow it down. Steve, what the hell are you... talk about who you love and who you miss and who your favorite person in the whole wide world is. Do you, Daddy? I love you very, very much. Well, I love him very, very, very much. You make me feel beautiful. Well, I love my dad a hundred trillion, a billion. It isn't just your eyes, is it? Talk about who you love. Do you? I'm admitting to your feelings. I need somebody to remind me that it's all worth it. Dad! Daddy! Well, I love my dad a hundred trillion, a billion. Dad! Still in one piece, huh? Guess it's just as your lucky day. Tom. Tom, hell! You know, it used to be you couldn't turn around without meeting someone who liked you or loved you or wanted to do something for you. But one by one, you're shutting them all out. And now you're down on me. I really don't think I can play anymore. Mike didn't dump me. No, uh, I bailed out. Why? Afraid it might not do the job? No, I wanted to. Lord, I wanted to. Everything had gotten too big for me. Yeah, I wanted to. But I found out somebody needs me. My boys need me, Tom. And I need them. All my life, I've been a winner. Since the accident, I've been losing the fight, losing my friends, everything that mattered. Because it's hard for me to lean on anybody, Tom. Always has been. Once you start, you give up control. I never had to do that. Not once. Suddenly, I had that throttle wide open. I realized bitterness, anger, pain have been the only things I could see since the accident. And bam! Somebody puts eyes in my head and I can see life better than I ever could. It's good. It's beautiful. It's very very worthwhile. I can't do it alone anymore. I need people. You and Nancy, all my friends. Maybe even a partner. I don't know if I think we could work together. 
start a design firm? <sighs> Gee, uh, I, I don't know. You can be real nasty on the telephone. Scare off all the business to be naturally attracted to my talent. Get Nancy to do that. She wouldn't have to work in a bar anymore. It's a whole lot better to look at, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. I think we could work something out. Tom, uh, one more thing. Yeah. You could help me up off my butt. <laughs> <laughs> comes before S. On flipboard? Yeah. Heads or tails? Heads. Yes. Tails. Wait. You don't trust me. Wrong number. You see this? My friend, my, my partner doesn't trust me. Oh, Steve. Oh, let me see it. You should have more faith in your friends. Accept them at their word. Trust. You, you should have more trust. Let me see that. <laughs> <laughs> 